Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Sorry for not reviewing this watch a little sooner after the unboxing video. I had an unpleasant experience buying this watch. You know, if you watch the unboxing video, you will know why. But that is not the main reason for the delay of this review though. Have you ever had the experience where you saw a watch online and on paper, the specs seem really great and fitting to what you want, but when you receive the watch, it just doesn't connect with you. This is exactly what I get from this watch. On paper, the size is great for my small wrist. On top of that, it comes with tritium tubes. Then, the case material attracted me as an engineer. It's called high impact fiber shell. Then, uh, if you look at it, the specs is no slouch at all. It's a watch meeting military specs and it's issued to real mil military personnel both in US and Canada. Each watch is also numbered individually. We will take a look at that when we see the back. There is an option for the general public to choose either to have the so-called US government phrase or text printed on the dial or not. So for this, I went with the version without the US government tax. Oh, did I mention that they put it on their website that this watch is designed in Canada and made in Switzerland? Why then there is no Swiss made on the dial? Well, it has a Japanese movement. To be exact, I think it's an Seiko and H35. Let's quickly go over the specs of the watch. The watch has a case diameter of 34mm and a thickness of 11mm from the uh, from the text on the website. Let's just quickly measure the lug to lug distance of the watch here. The lug to lug distance it's just a short 41mm. Well this really makes the watch uh, like very really wearable on a small wrist. Um, especially on with the numbers of the case diameter and on the lug to lug distance. And it also comes with the sapphire crystal, it's a flat sapphire crystal, but it only comes with 30 meters of water resistance because it's supposed to be a field watch. And even though it's meeting all the military specs, I think that those military specs is just uh, for standard issue for, you know, like normal military and not like Navy SEAL and people that will. Uh, that I expect to go diving with the watch. And the watch has a 16mm lug width. Initially, I did not think that that 16mm lug could be a real problem, but now I think it is. Well, the watch, let me just pull out the NATO strap here for a quick one. The watch originally did not come with spring bars. It has two pins, Two pins that are pressed through the fiber case. Let me quickly show you those two pins. I think I still keep it in the box here. Hopefully, let me try to find. Okay. So yeah, uh, let me just try to quickly grab them. Um, it's kind of hard for me to do it with my gloves on, so I'm gonna slide it off the edge of the table. So it comes with like just really pins type of pin. It's just like a uh, straight pins that are pressed through the case so I used something to knock out the pins from the case and I think on one of them or on two of them I tried to yank it out with the pliers at the ends you know because I cannot uh, knock it anymore so that caused the pins to be bent um, why I did that because uh, I thought you know if I can remove these fixed pins and be able to put on spring bars I should be able to have a wider choice of straps However, when I remove this press pin and put in uh, put in two spring bars for the, for the watch, I realized that you know the spring bars are too close to the watch case. So a typical leather strap won't fit unless it's like a super ultra thin leather. So I'm still stuck with needle straps, but I I, I know that there are several. 16 millimeters needle strap, but I just cannot find something that I like. Well, the case bag is just a press case bag. You can see there's a, a, a lip or a, what do you call a, 
a tab here you know if you want to remove the case back you use like a pry tool you stuck it in here you just pry it out and yep uh, because it's fitting to all military specs these are um, all the specs of the watch you know the name the meal spec that is uh, is meeting I think the one is the US the other one is in other specs I'm not too sure um, then the 25 milli curies is about the radiation from the tritium tube and I think the NRC ID or what the, is or maybe the serial number is the individually uh, numbered uh, watch as what is stated on uh, Marathon website. Watch comes with a push pull crown. The NH35 inside is both hand windable and hackable. Then coming to the NATO, the NATO strap is also not the best design in my opinion. I'm not sure how practical it is, but uh, I guess you will see. Because the NATO strap only comes with a single fixed keeper. I'm not sure you can see uh, the autofocus on my phone is jumping around. I'm, I usually get that when I have this kind of background. So uh, yeah, it's a fixed keeper and when you put it on race, you know, you will really have to push the watch case all the way near this buckle. If not, you know, you try to imagine. Just try to imagine here. If I don't do that, and this strap is something like this, when you put the watch on the wrist, the excess material will be sometimes beneath your wrist, or if you have a smaller wrist, it could be up on the other ways, on the other side of your wrist. So you cannot have like the typical uh, NATO style fold that you put the, the watch on then you'll be able to like you know fold the, or tuck in the excess near the end of the watch so um, let me just try to put this on my wrist to uh, so that you can get a picture of what I mean All right so this is how the watch sits on my 6 inch or 15.2 centimeters wrist so if you look at it top down you may you may think that well it doesn't look too bad because you know you still have like your standard standard uh, tucked in needle style but when you try to rotate the watch over you see where the buckle is is so it's going to be somewhere always on the outer edge of your or outer side of the wrist because you wanted to have the keeper um, somewhere near here so you will somehow need to wear the watch in such a way that the buckle is always on the outer side of the reach, uh, wrist which I feel a little awkward then um yes i can still uh, pull this watch because i still like you know i'm the, on the third hole or so uh but the thing is that you know you have a lot of excess material okay too much excess material if you have my size of wrist or you have like below average wrist sizes and when you want to tuck it in you, you either push this side very high tall up or you need to pull this part down but when you pull this part down well, it's going to be awkward. It's going to interfere with the buckle and maybe interfere with how you move about. So I'm not sure how practical this is, but then again, I don't think there's any um, undersized personnel or underweight personnel um, inside the US or Canadian military. So it will not be much of a problem for them, but for the general public, if you have like a smaller wrist, um, yeah, you might feel a little awkward putting this on, even though it's a small watch, you know, you might feel that, okay, it's, got, it's, it's a small watch, it will feel quite at home on my wrist, but somehow it is not. Well, because of all the nuances, this watch has in all this time become my bedside watch. Unlike Loom, you don't need to charge the tritium tube. Um, so, it, which is why it's good to be to treat it as a bedside watch because the the the, the night glow or the what do you call it, loom is always there. You don't need to charge it with like some bright light, and then it will stay lit like for um, forever. Like for example, uh, this one is a tritium tube, so it contains a radioactive isotope of hydrogen inside the tube, and on the inner walls of the tube is they they are coated with phosphorus and um, well from what I read tritium emits electron through beta decay and when this electron hits the phosphor layer it gives out a photon or light tritium has a half-life of about I guess about 12 years so in 12 years or so the brightness will be half of the current brightness and again in another 12 years it will be half and another 12 years it will be half so this is what half-life is gonna be so the loom will stay lit until a point that you cannot discern because the half-life 
uh, it's like it, it went through too much half-life until you know you cannot see the loom anymore so that's that's what good about critium so being a bedside watch you don't worry you know having needing to charge the the loom you know and yeah if you do not want to use a phone to read your watch in the middle of the night uh, yeah this will be a better option because it's not that bright but you, you can still read the time and just remember that you know if you're not wearing it because it's not a watch it already becomes like a bedside clock or bedside watch just remember to wind it because the nh35 has hand winding function all right i guess this pretty much covers um, most of the aspects of this watch so if you're new to the channel please help to subscribe to my channel it really helps me a lot and yeah i'll catch you guys in the next video bye, -bye.